Do you struggle making kick drums? Do you have issues with making your kicks sound the exact same way that you want them to sound? Then I have two solutions for you. One is a little bit more practical and the other is a little bit more time consuming, but it will give you a little bit more control over exactly how you want your kick to sound. The first solution is to download my kick packs, which I'm releasing today. You can get it for just $10 or if you're part of my Patreon, either for eight or six dollars, depending on what tier you are, you get a promo code for that uh, and for all of my other products as well. The other way to get better kick drums is to synthesize them yourself. And that's what this tutorial is for. So we're going to look at Serum, Vital, as well as Faceplant and see which one of them makes the best kick drums, which one has the easiest workflow with kick drums. So let's get right into that. So before we get into the actual synthesis, I want to show you the kick pack that I made. Right now the kick pack has 30 kicks in there. You can see this is the last one, which is number 30. I might add a few more in there. I might add the ones from this tutorial or just make a few more. What you will see is that there is a demo video that's going to be up right as this tutorial is coming or maybe a little bit later. I don't exactly know because I'm recording this far in advance. But if this goes up on my YouTube channel, not on the, the Patreon site, which gets early access to videos, but on the actual channel as an actual video just like normally published then around that time the demo should also come out and the pack will be available so then you will be able to see exactly how many kicks are in there so if you want you can just use these kicks and you can use them in your tracks just drag them in and then they are ready to go but say you want to make your own kick drums let's investigate which synths you should use for that and the way we're going to do this is I'm going to make one kick drum in each of the three synths that I've lined out. So we have Serum, Vital and Faceplant. And we're going to see some of the features that help and some of the features that hinder you a little bit in making kick drums in each of the synths. So the very first thing that we're going to do is look at Serum. The reason why I do it in Serum is because that's the best one to explain kind of the concept that we're going through. So let's just start by getting us a sine wave, which is what a kick is made out of. So we start by getting basic shape sine waves. One thing that I often do kind of almost intuitively if I need a sine wave is I go to this one here because it has a little bit more character. You can see some of the extra harmonics here. For kick drums, this is not really what we want. We want something that is a lot cleaner. This also is phase inverted. That doesn't really matter because we can set the phase right here and then it will have the same starting point as the other one if we were to set the phase right there right it would start by it going up and this also start by it going up so what i like to do is i like to use the lfos because then you have a lot more control over the individual points especially when you're modifying pitch but also when you're modifying the volume and you're creating your final volume curve it's much easier to do that within the lfos than it is to do within the envelopes so the way we're going to set up our lfos is we're going to set it to envelope mode and then i'm going to go to 1 8 because our kicks, usually if we look at sidelines kicks, we can take some of these as an example. They take up the first half of the beat. So we're only really interested in the first half note right here, right? So the first half of the beat, which is an eighth note. So what we can do with this envelope is we can just draw in a shape that kind of creates the pitch envelope for our main body of the kick, which I'm going to do like so. I'm going to set something up like this, maybe a little bit like this, and we can experiment with this. Maybe have it like go down a little bit less steep, maybe something like this. Always have it go down a little bit. And then we set this to the course pitch, make sure that it's uh, unidirectional, and we just set it up to a tone that we like. We can play again with this later as well. So now we get something that sounds like this. So we get that little bit of oomph that we're searching for in the kick, but we don't really have a click yet. We don't really have a transient. For that, what we can do is we can use LFO2 and again, envelope eighth note, and we set it to a nice quick transient, something like this. And now what we actually have to do is we cannot just set this to this one as well and turn it up. And the reason for that is because it's actually targeting the same modulation and that modulation can only go up by 50% maximum, which is the maximum here, which is 64 semitones, which is just not enough. So what I like to do is I like to take this and set this LFO2 to global master tuning and then make sure again, it's unidirectional so it doesn't go below it. And now we should have a little bit more of a click. 
So now we can draw in our volume shape. As you can hear, it's a lot longer than we want it to be. So if we take another LFO here and we create an eighth note like this, I'm going to draw in the kind of curve that I know kind of works. We want a nice long body for the nice sub. And then we want a little bit of a dip here right after our transient so that our transient stands out more. And we just set that to the volume. Make sure to set it to envelope. So now we can take input from Serum and we can actually record this. And we can look at the kick that we've just created. We can see, check our waveform, see if everything is okay, if there's no issues here. And it looks like a clean kick, but we might want to do some more processing on it, like EQing, stuff like that. But this is really the basic of synthesis. Now there is some more stuff that you can do. For example, we can add a little bit of an extra transient. The reason why we would do that is because it's maybe a little bit too clean right now. So I've just loaded up a spectrum on this Serum channel and we can look at it. If we play this, you can see it's a very clean line going down. Right, just a straight line and then it rolls off. Not very exciting. We might want some extra texture, some extra tone to that. For that, I'm going to use these attacks here. Now I know 38 works very well. And what I like to do is I like to take out all of the sub from that. So I'm going to put the noise oscillator into the filter, have a high pass on there, and just kind of draw in a shape like this. And now we should see, then obviously we need to make sure that it's in one shot mode and that the level is set appropriately. Maybe something like this, we can play around with that as well. And now we should see that there's a nicer spectrum and it's just a little bit more exciting. So normally what I would do from here as I would start to get into EQing, maybe layering some other layers on top of that, maybe like a hat sound or something like that. Basically what I've done for the kickback, right? Just really fine tune this particular kick. But I cannot really do that for two reasons. One, the video will become way too long. I don't want to make another whole video because we also have to go through Vital and Faceband and talk about those. And Two is because I'm on headphones and that just doesn't give you the best representation of what your kick sounds like. So because of that second reason, I might do some specific tweaking that doesn't really make any sense only because I hear it weird on my headphones. So for now, I just don't want to get into that right now. Instead, what I would like to do is talk a little bit about Vital and what's different inside Vital. So in Vital, what you want to do is you want to again, take just a basic sine wave and we can still use the same LFOs here. So I'm going to set this up to one over eight envelope mode and I can draw in a little bit like here. Maybe have a point right there and we'll give this a little bit of the same shape. The shape, again, as I said, you can experiment with it and you can really go crazy with it. Maybe we want this one to be a little bit darker. So we're going to have it basically go below quicker. So it, it goes down faster, right? So therefore it gets more darker, more sub tone. So once we have our curve, again, we can set the modulation to the pitch and we can set whatever modulation amount that we want. I'm going to go to the same ballpark, which is around 40 to 50, basically in semitones, around the same that we did in Serum. Now there's one issue here with Vital and that is that you need to take the smooth all the way down Otherwise it's going to apply some smoothing to this curve and it's just going to actually be a different curve than what you're drawing in here. And you don't really want that obviously. You want this curve that you're drawing in here to actually be the actual modulation that happens to that sine wave. Now a cool thing that Vital has going for it is that you can actually take the modulation far enough that it makes sense to just modulate this one here. So for the second one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set a LFO to 116. And what that allows me to do is it allows me to basically have a bigger resolution of the click. So if I, for example, say, okay, my click looks like this in one over eight, then I can make it look like this. So basically double the size of this click in one over 16. And that just gives me a little bit more space to work with. And if you want a lot, a lot of space, you can obviously set it even faster, but for now, 1 over 16 is good. Smoothing off, I'm going to set this to here as well. Now we can do our volume curve. For this one, I'm feeling something a little bit more drawn out here. Maybe something like this. And then we apply this to the level. 
by setting the level all the way down and then setting the modulation all the way up. Set this to envelope, one over eight. And obviously turn off smoothing. And that's a kick drum. Now, as I mentioned before, you can just go in and tweak it as much as you want. For example, I find this kick to be a little bit too clicky. So I'm going to turn this click down a little bit in time. And I'm also going to turn down the modulation a bit. Maybe that's a bit too much. Something like that. So just as a test, let's record this vital kick and see what we get. We have another kick drum, which follows what we've drawn in, in terms of the, the volume. You can see that this one is a little bit more relaxed as this one, right? If I put this on here, you can see that this one goes back up earlier, which is more in line of the automation that we drew into Serum. Now let's look at Faceband. And Faceband has a little bit of an issue, or not so much an issue, but a little bit of a different workflow that you need to get used to. So you can definitely do kicks within Faceband. So again, you would take an analog sine wave and you would take a curve in this case, which is very useful because you can just draw on the curve and you can sync this again to one over eight, like so. And then we can set this to the pitch right here. And again, it just gives you the amount of pitch modulation that you're doing. So we're going for 38, 40 semitones right now. And this again will be the body of our kick. Now, if I go in here and I try to draw in the normal curve like this, you can see the way it works is it kind of starts out bending outwards like this, which is not what we want, right? We want it to basically go down to this point as fast as possible. And the way that you do that is you just right click this point here and you can see how it changes, right? It goes down much sharper, which gives us more control over basically how we want it to look. And we can do it something like this maybe. Uh, let's go for that. And then let's keep a little bit of body in here. Something like this. Just have it like shape down like right about like that. Now again, we can use our same click here. And the cool thing about curve is that you can also set it in seconds. So what we can basically do is just modify this like this and then set up the same modulation here. We can set it to a certain amount. The only problem here is, as you can see, if I go higher, then it doesn't want to work. And I don't really know how it would go any higher than that. What we might be able to do is use a pitch shift here. So it can go up, up until like five hertz, which should be enough for a click. Right, so we're using the, the frequency shifting as opposed to the actual pitch shifting but because this is a sine wave that doesn't really matter. So now I can tune my click and just set it very short. Say that I want it to be, let's get a click of like 20 milliseconds and let's listen to what that sounds like. Now, another cool thing about Faceplant is that you don't actually have to set up another curve here and set it to the level. The way you can use your curve is you can just use it as an output module and this will take care of the volume of this particular sine wave. So we set it to sync, one over eight, and we can go in here and design our curve exactly the way we want. Maybe something like this. Maybe we want our click to be a little bit faster. And now again, as a test, we can record this and see what we get. We get another kick drum. You do need to check the volume here. So if I put this to zero, you can see that it's going down a little bit. Maybe we want a little bit more of a volume dip right here. So we can do that by just going in here and taking this point down a little lower. It just changes the tone a little bit. Now that should be a more significant volume drop right there. Yeah, you can see the volume drop is more lower than it was before. So that's everything you need to know about kick drum synthesis. As I said, I didn't go into the processing. I just wanted to focus on the synthesis, which means that if you've done this process of synthesis, there is a whole new process that you need to go through to actually make it sound perfect, which is all of the processing, obviously like EQing, compression, and all of the things that you need to do to actually make it mix ready, which is what I've done with all of the kicks from the pack. So if you're interested in having mix ready kicks for your tracks, then there's a link in the description directly to the pack. 
There's also more products on my page that you can look at, uh, which I'll also link in the description. It's just my website where there's a list overview of all of the products that I make. But that's going to be the video for this week. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, then let me know by leaving a like. And if you're new here and you want to see more of what I do here, then you can subscribe. If you are already subscribed and you want to get actually notified by YouTube when I'm uploading something, then you can hit the bell icon and then YouTube will give you a message on your phone or via email or whatever you have set up as I actually upload something. So you'll immediately be able to watch it. But that's going to be everything for today. Again, I hope you enjoyed and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye bye.